I fell in love with words early in life, and in many ways, words fell in love with me. Welcome to Wine Down Wednesdays. Today's episode is all about the power of words. In my world, words bring dreams to life or breaks them. Since 2013, they were the most silent years of my life. What do you More, mean by silent? There wasn't much speaking I was doing to people. Everything was overwhelming. Let's go to the road. So for me, I came in truly as a real sacrifice project of my family. Wow. And that even makes me emotional because that mm. reminds me of the power of people believing in you, especially those from whom you come. Mm. In every waking moment, word is choice. To love without ceasing or to let go. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays. Today's episode is all about the power of words. Now, my guest today is a believer in exactly that. Not just the written words, but the spoken words as well. Oh my God, this is happening. It is, finally. It is so good to finally get you on the couch. It feels like um, home. Mm. to be here so thank you the power of words that's what came to my mind when i kept thinking about sitting down with you because i read something that truly spoke to my heart to say that you if when it comes to your legacy people should find it in in what you have written can yeah. we just start there first of all yeah I'll, I'll say the quote as 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 it is actually in like mm. um uh, as, as uh, i i wrote it and it, i'm i bless the ancestors or the gods or the, you know, for really gifting me with that word because mm. it also surprised me and I said, that is beautiful, I have so to write profound. it. Yeah. It came to my mind and I wrote it as it came. Um, it says, when I'm gone, find me where I wrote. Um, and I am mm. really grateful because they're very, they're, it's one of those rare statements or gifts of word that have come to my mind that I find so apt. They, these, like it has been as relevant yes. in my, to, to, to me, to my inner space, to my inner self as the day I wrote it all through the years till today. Wow. And I am deeply grateful for those words because when I reflect on them, they tell me... Um, that my, that any time I could be gone, mm. that is just the reality of life. Any time I could be gone. To seize the moment, seize So the yes, day. yes to seizing the moment, yes to, but also I have no fear of being gone because I remain oh. in my words. I remain through word. Word transcends time mm. and space and realms. Wow. And I think that to me, that was, um, I, I, I was grateful to, you know, the higher power for bringing that revelation to me that I, and, and liberating me through those mm, words mm. that came and to me. And early enough, because yeah. sometimes I feel like we, re we realize yeah. Yeah. things that are that profound late. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think things come in their time, but yes. I, I'm grateful that since... I think around since that time when that, I can't remember, it must have been when I, maybe about six or seven years ago when that came, when mm. I made that statement and wrote it on my Twitter um, page. And I've never been moved to move, to change it or edit it or, because it is so up the way it is. It came and it, it, and it, it really, I believe it came from a higher power. It, it, really, it, it definitely you know, came it from was a an, very yeah. special space. Uh, And it liberated me into realizing I... One, life itself is a gift. Mm. Word is a gift to me specifically because word for me is that which restores me. It's that which renews me. It is that which I can use to navigate life and to navigate the complexity of things like love, just the human experience generally, friendship, everything. For me, word allows me to be to be wow. me and um but but you but recognizing that word is uh 
a really transcendent thing mm -hmm. allows me to say, you know what? Everything material that I have and everything that is finite, including my life, mm. it will run out. But what will remain for my children, should I you know, be blessed with those, and their generation and everything that will outlive us, what will remain of mm. me is my words or is my wow. spirit that is communicated through the words I will have written. And it doesn't have to be, it, it, it's, it's everywhere I, I left a piece of myself mm. through writing. Oh my goodness. I know I forgot yeah. my manners, but <laughs> welcome to Wind Down Wednesday. You Thank you such, for having me. Your presence is larger than life. You know, you, there's just something about you. And I remember the first piece that, the first time I actually watched you do spoken word was on YouTube. It was a YouTube video. Or yeah. Some, some, somebody yeah. showed me something. Yeah. And I remember just goosebumps all over my body. You were with your sister in that one. Lovely, yeah. And I kept thinking, oh my God, what a beautiful thing to share yeah. with your sister, but also the way it moved me. Mm. And to hear you, and by the way, discovering what you want your legacy to be this early on in life itself is such a gift. Yeah. But I feel like we're running, so we're going to walk back a little, a little bit, bit and yeah. crawl first. <laughs> yeah, no, but... Let's yeah. first get to know who you were that led to who you are now. Going mm. back to you as a child, were you always into poetry? What was it like growing up? And how did you discover this ability to use words to move people? You know, I don't think I discovered it the way... You know, people land on, a, on a, a lake in the middle of the Great Lakes region and say, we've discovered Lake Victoria <laughs> and therefore it is discovered now, henceforth. Um, <laughs> it, um, it, it, I, I journeyed and, and stumbled upon mm. that realization yeah. that words were a gift to me, mm. that I loved them. It's not necessarily that I was particularly good at using them at a young age or mm. anything. I was, a, I was not no child prodigy of any kind, but I loved words. And when I think about that, where that came from, it's the heritage um, that I have been privileged to, to gain or to receive from uh, my parents and my, the community that raised me. Wow. And that I am intentional about using the word community because, wow, I was raised by a community, a community of family. Mm. So beyond just my immediate, you know, family siblings and parents and that, but the extended family and boarding school. I, oh. uh, I was in boarding school when I was oh, six, yes. mm, all six through my life, old. yes, six wow. years. And all through my life, I was in a, in a, all through my school years, I was in a boarding school setting. So living majority of my year, Mm. at school yes. with a wide variety of all sorts of like fellow students characters. from all parts of the region. Mm. And what I didn't know was that that was nurturing in me, that curiosity, that love for mm. a diversity of stories. Wow. And that so that that experience but also there's a community of friends that i've made that even outside the school experience and and into my work life wow mm. the friendships that i've made because of my creative work because of my professional well yes. mainstream professional work and i want to and get into that yes. a little later uh, on, but yes. there's a combination i am a combination of the nurturing I have gotten from the community and mm. communities mm. that have raised me. Yes. And those, and for me, uh, those, uh, what I gained specifically from my family line is, is the pride in stories. I grew up around storytellers. Yes. Um, my parents who are such amazing storytellers, they've told us about their own lives their own struggles, their wow. own dreams, wow. their own joys. And we've been able to share in that to the extent that they were able to share. Um, but what that did for us is that for me, I, I, you know, I leaned into those stories. Yes. I remember loving to read the storybooks my dad would buy us when we were younger mm. and just relishing them. And thankfully, 
we no, not only did we just get you know access to western you know story yeah, books yes, yes, but yes. my my father bought books authored by by East Africans and we read it was books intentional 100% and and that's... not just East Africans but Africans mm -hmm. generally as we grew up like stories were something that were nurtured because our family loves stories and, and he we really yes, yeah. did uh, he sowed that seed in you. Even yeah, when, but every even, time yeah. you talk about telling the story, yeah. African has to appear somewhere. One hundred percent. Like, uh, yeah, I, I think I think I gained a deeper understanding or affection for African stories. Yes, yes. You know, as a teen, but that had been nurtured. That seed had yes. been planted yeah. because the story books that we that my father bought us when we were younger to share. We remember some of these to date uh, because we, we relished those stories and yeah. we told them and he encouraged us to tell them. But my mother too tells her story of life in, you know, in, in her, of her own growing up in the mm -hmm. village mm -hmm. and amongst different members of the family and, and our, and, and I just, today I, I think I'm deeply grateful to come from um, what I believe is a, a heritage of storytellers. Wow. Um, and they used, and that was fundamentally words. It was oral history being passed down. Mm -hmm. Now. I appreciate that so much more yeah. because that is how our oral history has been passed down. And I hope to be able to share that. That is yes, fundamentally yes, pass it African. On. I think that it's is fundamentally a responsibility us. Yeah, to absolutely. be able to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. So I fell in love with that. And I remember um, being encouraged um, to, when it came to telling stories, wanting to write about uh, my holidays experience. <laughs> and the first thing I ever wrote and published publicly I wrote a story about my December holidays. I must have been in like P3 or around eight years old or mm. something like that. Yes, eight. Wow, that and is, that and my father said, you know what, let's take you to the New Times and let's get a story written uh, written oh, around. Oh, wow. and, and so that I could go back to school and it would be hung on the notice board. Oh, my Me, My picture there, I, mm. I imagine I look, I would cringe at the picture now. But the story was my December holidays and that was my first published you were story. Eight. I was eight. In this here, I went to New Times and it was Your a small, father. you know, and it was and it was just an encourage. And of course, it was something to I, keep I, me busy. Was, I took time to write a story, that, but at it but now, you th you right? see something as small as that. Mm. Some you know, a parent who says, "Oh, this child wants to write a story." Okay, then let's go. Let, let's, let's support put, them. Let's, let's celebrate yeah. them. Let's and even I didn't necessarily them. know everything that was going on around that. I just yeah. wanted to write my story and tell whoever could listen. Wow. And I was excited to go back to school mm. and tell my teachers, "This is what happened. I went to visit Auntie So and So." and I went to do this and we played and we did that and that was a storyteller being nurtured in me. Wow. And those were words being encouraged. Those were packaging of words and are being encouraged. That, mm. Because, you know, even my, even my school environment, my teachers, my friends, they, they recognized this about me. Yeah, I remember but, but them. I feel like I'm learning something and I yeah. hope that our Amy family is hearing you and taking this in. If you're a parent and you notice your child is good at something, encourage it. Because mm -hmm. as parents, we tend to think, you know, they have to be doctors and nurses and we're good at motivating when it comes to uh, what the children are doing at school. But these soft skills, yeah. they matter. You know, how you respond is important. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm, I'm I truly so hope to be able to that. do that as a parent one yes. day. Um, um, uh, but at the same time, I think that is a gift I will, I continue to give. And you see, I, I, I reference, you know, should I have my own kids and everything. But at the end of the day, that's, I have already been in in story in the world of my creative life I have I have nurtured many I continue to be able to because my words transcend me and they go and they and they're planted in the minds and the spirits of mm. younger people mm -hmm. who in many ways creatively I have been part of nurturing so those yes. are my creative children if I would dare to say <laughs> and yes. I, ha I hate to I don't want to infantilize them in that sense because yes. no everyone is gifted beautifully and I love actually to experience younger people who are talented with words and stories mm. and art mm. and for me that just gives me so much energy but at the same time word has that power yes. to go beyond you when you've told that story when you've written that poem when you've shared that piece of yourself because it is always something, it comes from you. Yeah. The words come from you. And it, even if it's not about you, even, mm. and I've written a number of times about things yeah. that had nothing to do with me. Experiences. But experiences yeah. that you've distilled into word, mm -hmm. when you put them out there as art or a story of some form, they go and they become bigger than you. 
and you have to honor that and you mm. have to release that you have to release them and I'm you curious. and and you see those are seeds you plant and that's how you outlive that's how your words outlive you yes that's you how know. you create that legacy but i'm curious yeah. about your your creative process mm. you know from from the inspiration to putting those words on paper to i think i have something mm. to now it's for publishing because you know I, I, yeah I like that's a very interesting be. question actually because you know i never had a structured creative process and i don't think to date i have a very structured creative process i just recognize that it is a the one thing that i think i allow myself to submit to mm. is that this gift is comes with a responsibility mm. to channel it in the most honest way yes. that I, I am responsible for channeling my words or my stories or my poetry or my work, my creative work responsibly yeah. in a way that like, and, and for me, responsibility means honesty. Mm. It means whatever it is, even if I'm afraid of it, I need to find a way of communicating it that means I am not being dishonest. Yes. And I have struggled with that sometimes when it's like topics that have nothing to do with me because I'm like, am I really, yeah. have I, Are you doing have I it end, justice? am I doing it justice? Have I entered that story well enough to experience what that person experienced and channel it because I'm honoring their story. Mm. And so for me, the one creative part of my creative process that I think is, is a thing I, I submit to with respect is that words, when you have a gift for words, um, you are responsible for honoring that gift and mm. honoring the power that comes with Whether. your platform or mm. the power that comes with the ability to channel words, to bring, to speak life. Yes. I, I choose that that is my, my vantage point. I, mm. I have to see it as my words should speak life into others. Yeah. They should speak life back into me. When I look back at something I wrote, mm. I want to feel like, yeah, that speaks life into me. Even mm. if it was maybe tough to deal with, complex yes, emotions yes. I was grappling with or, or, or I was helping to channel. Mm. Um, I just want to know that when I look back, I, I want those things to speak to me. And, and that's mm. happening now that, of course, it's actually been 10 years since I've been publicly performing poetry. Wow. Uh, but I've been writing for a longer time, of course, because the story was always part of my thing. Mm. Even in my school life, um, again, as young as eight, seven, I was always called on to sort of... I was one of those students who were called on to do reading competitions mm -hmm. and do, you know, as, and I was of school. Of there course, was always that was not that quality. That, <laughs> that was a thing that, that <laughs> my friends and naturals in school they could, see. could mm. see that, you know, I love words, I love language, mm. I am able, to, I am enthusiastic about it. So they, they put me forth but, and but they is, pushed me. And I remember my English see. teachers mm. all through my life, and God bless them, my English and literature teachers were always my favorite because mm. we understood each other they had a sense of respect which is interesting because yeah. i was young much younger but there's a way they spoke to me that allowed me to feel received mm. respected they they thought well of me they thought i could do well always they didn't accept it when i didn't do well in those in those subjects they just said you are gifted with you know you are you would know you have this in you mm. and even when i wasn't necessarily doing superbly well yeah. at whatever point in time these teachers knew how to channel and they knew i think it's because they understand themselves the power of of stories and words and what yeah. they do to us and language. And it's interesting. And so for me, I loved. It's very important that people understand um, the role naturals play. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about your teachers and you're talking about how they saw you, the mm. words they spoke to you. All yeah. of these things kind of fed uh, mm -hmm. your, you and your gift. Yeah. And you're able to, to, you know, kind of like mm. feed off of how they see you. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about um, creativity, confidence mm -hmm. is, is a very interesting um, factor to mm -hmm. consider. Because no matter how talented you are, if you don't believe in yourself, Mm -hmm. or if you don't have a support system and the surrounding that is enabling, most of the most talented people are lying in the gra graveyards okay. and will never get to see, mm -hmm. you know, that. But anyway, looking at what they contributed to you, 
that's very impressive. But I'm curious about what you did to feed your own confidence to be yeah. able to get up there. I love, I love that we've come to that and I guess in some ways also back to that because I, I you know, for one reason or another, fear has been a close... I would not want to use the word friend, but fear has been there. Mm. I've been afraid in many instances in, throughout my life about even the power of my words, sometimes afraid of the weight of my words because my thoughts and, you know, when you're... I don't know. I think those of us who are writers can relate that we are thinkers. Yes. Heavy thinkers. And with that comes an inevitability of dealing with heavy thoughts. Yes. And how do you communicate heavy thoughts, complex thoughts, in words that are easy to digest, that don't overwhelm the spirit? Don't overwhelm you, mm -hmm. but don't overwhelm whoever will stumble Whoever's upon them. It, yes. um, and that's a skill you learn. I don't know how I can, I don't know that I can say this, I learned it at some point. I just, you just work your muscle. And, mm. and, and you learn it through different things. And you see this reference to working muscle, I will come back to it in that. In, uh, let me put, hold that thought there. But um, I, over time, I've been all, there's a fear that, and an anxiety about the weight of words and the weight of, your, of or fear of your own self, fear of your own, what you're carrying within you, how to channel it out in word, yes. um, in, in art that is consumable, or just, just sharing, you know, stories. But I was always reassured by people who cared to listen, that, you know what, you're a good storyteller. Oh, that was nice. Oh, if I wrote a story, oh, that was a great composition. If I mm -hmm. made up something, oh, they believed it. Like, yes. I made it sound even like, like fiction yes. stories. I could make them sound believable. So I learned these skills in a very informal sort of style, just doing it and watching people do it, just yes. whoever was around me that could that I thought I could look up to in the moment. I understood that, you know what? It's okay. Fear, mm -hmm. but do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Push through. Fear, but do it anyway. But I, and, then, and that mm -hmm. brings me all the way. So I, that kept happening. That kept happening. I, I would just be, you know, sometimes afraid to share, but I would you know, put it in some form of, you know, let me just push through and write the story or tell the story or, you know, be part of that. Um, and then a number of things contributed. So I'll come back to the thought that I held with, which is I was always involved in sports. I love sports growing up I'm a very I was a very active child I and and not, not necessarily you know I just always loved to be playing out in the field out in nature out mm. it doesn't matter whether I was losing in the sport I was in the sport yes. I was in it I was swimming I was running I was taking part in and there's something that sports does to you as a as a child growing up, as you're being in your formative years, mm -hmm. it allows you to be in community with others. It yes. allows you to try and work with others as a team. Even yes. when you're fighting, even when they're bullying you, you learn how to try and stand up for yourself. It, you, you learn how other. to do this. Mm. You know how. And I was a timid child, but sports allowed me to find safe, some sort of safe, structured way mm. of communicating with others and being learning, navigating community. Mm -hmm. That allowed me to be, learn so much. I was always part of arts, uh, music, dance, and drama clubs and things and debate and you trying even when I was child. yeah and I was a social yeah. child 100% mm. but there was this deep fear that still you would be surprised to know that I still dealt with a deep fear deep sense of not oh. being sure who I was what I struggled with some real anxieties mm -hmm especially being away from home for some time, like be, like they were real yes. and those things were as heavy. But at the same time, there were these channels, these channels of community. It's yes. the sports, it's mm. the music, dance and drama. It is the... Outlets. It was the, there you. were outlets. Yes. It was the debating. Even when I froze, I would go to that mic and try to bring <laughs> out that argument and just try. Mm. But I didn't stop. Yes. I don't know that I can attribute that to myself, mm -hmm. but I just know that something kept me going. And wow. I found that I found some restoration in that, mm. some sense of outlet, some yes. sense of community. Some, I found a number of things. Mm. And all those things fed into keeping me going. Yes. And then I never thought to really start performing my poetry. First of all, even writing poetry. I, I remember I, was, <laughs> I wrote my first like proper poem. I ventured into poetry while I was bored in a class. And I am ashamed to admit it was a language class. I was bored, sleepy, and I was in my emotions. And I was at, uh, just at the start of my teens. So my mm -hmm. my hormones and emotions hormones. were, 
everywhere, everywhere. There was a, a and I think I don't to know. Top yeah, I don't know if heartbreak may have been part of it. <laughs> Very childish, but I was there. Yes. In that lesson. And I had this notepad and I had this pen and mm. I said, you know what, let me follow my thoughts. Yes. And I wrote a poem I probably would cringe at right now, but I wrote it. And I did not know what it would result in. I just what remember. Was, do you remember the name of the poem? I think it was like, I, it was about identity. I was, ex and I, I, oh, when, wow. I can't remember the title exactly. It was, I think, about I am who I am or something like that. Mm. I can't remember it, mm. but it was about exploring. That's deep for When I remember the age. content, um, when I try to recollect it, it was about exploring who I am. I am, I am, uh, you know, I am, I am a combination of high emotions, low emotions, some, you know, like I flow like the wind, some, some, something mm -hmm. lame that I would think is lame, lame. now. I don't think so. At that point, I think, I think it was that powerful. That was oh my deep. God. Yeah, uh, yeah it was really deep for me because I was, I think I was trying team. to navigate heavy, mm -hmm. the heavy new thoughts of a young teen yes. who was trying to navigate all of this emotions and I was trying to distill them I, I, I you know now that I think about it and I remember keeping it for a week that I, I, I was like oh my god this is, this is not great then I shared it with some, some close friends some of my girlfriends yes. you know and they were like wow this is nice mm. you should write more poems when did you write this you wrote this <laughs> and I said this thing has power like the yes. way I felt about it and the way and my the friends reacted it, yes. to it I thought that's crazy. This is interesting. This is yeah. so curiosity began. Mm. And my friend's curiosity is a great thing. Yes. It's not, it, ne it never killed the cat. It brought it back to life. <laughs> yeah, um, curiosity took mm. me there. It yeah. said, let me write another poem. Then I wrote it. Another now more concentrated poem. Mm -hmm. I wrote it. I shared it. Then the third one, I think I even wrote and shared with my history teacher at the time, who was a friend, you know? The, 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 my humanities and arts teachers, like, just got me in a way. Mm. And that's how I think I knew that there was this affinity. I did love the sciences. Make no mistake, I did love biology. Yes. I, all, I had wanted to be a doctor for a while. I had thought of myself as a scientist, but you know, there are some parts of the sciences that for me required more mm. effort, more. And I thought, you know, because this takes more. But I felt like this other side, the humanities and whatnot, actually came a bit more naturally. Yeah, you sort of resonated. I more think I resonated. Sense, but at yeah. the same time, I have a profound to date i have a profound respect for the sciences especially mm. the, the sciences of the human body and the yes. biology and yes, medical yes. and and that stuff has continued i have continued to be interested in the world of the sciences mm. because i also think they're intricately connected yes i don't think a person who's truly a scientist and truly an artist would see the two worlds as exclusive mutually yes. exclusive yes, they're yes, not yes. they're both a result of, mm. of uh, the wonders and mysteries mm. of the universe and the world. Um, so, so let's go that back. So I, I remember sharing the third poem with a history teacher and he thought, wow, you wrote that. And I said, if my teacher could think I wrote this and was surprised, then maybe there's more to it. There's so I just a, a continued writing and sharing mm -hmm. with select few. Mm -hmm. writing, and then they would always be wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it continued like that. It just didn't change. Then I would start, then Instagram came. Actually, all these social media platforms came. So I would yes. write a quote there and then be like, wow. And then, you know, and then I would write, you know, you know, when you're just, honestly, remember high five days? You remember yes, all those, yes, those, those times, yes. those early Facebook days? Oh, gosh. <laughs> But we, look back we wrote cringe. things, yeah, mm. but we wrote things, I wrote things, and somehow they would be really taken in. And I yes. thought, wow. So curiosity kept me going. And then when I was, um, I found myself fast forward in the US, my uh, first full year of being there in college, I was 19. And that fear had taken on a whole, become a monster. Mm. And I think that is when I became without knowing it or without understanding the whole process. But it's when I became um, aware of, you know, mental health struggles. Mm. What was happening that in that moment that was I was saving. away for the first time, okay. so far away yes, from home. change. Mm. The change was complete. Like mm. everything was new, different. Yes. I was now a young black girl in a majority white place, country, like everything was different. The food, the mm. culture, the everything. And I think I really, I embraced it. There's a curiosity, adventurous side of me that just said yes, but I had not 
known how to communicate and how to interact with that environment in order to tap into the community that there yes. is. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. I was lucky. There were, I believe in my life, God has placed guardian angels, for lack of a better word. There were always, there was always a couple of people who are somehow pla rightly placed in my life at that time who spoke life into me. Mm -hmm. And if I can look back now and say why I didn't give up on myself, why I kept trying, it was because they would, when they met me, they encouraged me. Yes. They spoke, they reminded me of the power of my gifts. Mm -hmm. They, you know, and, and that would bring me in a short while towards how I began to perform. But, but, but during that time, there were people who, and one of them was the dean of the, of the, the honors program I was part of, who really would sit me down and say, you know, I understand you might struggle sometimes in these spaces, mm -hmm. but I know how it is to be far away from home. Yes. And you feel inadequate and you feel like you're trying to, you're groping in the dark and mm -hmm. because I've been there and he had, I think he had had this experience before. And I, he, I had not told him any of this. I didn't know, I didn't have the language. I didn't have the tools to explain to him what was going through, but he yes. could read it. Mm -hmm. And again, that is for me, guardian and angelship. That, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he sat me and spent some, he would take every once in a while, I would sit and, and he'd speak some life into me. And his wife loved on me as well. And, yes. and they, they, they were so warm. And so did I... You had a sense of a support system. And they were, yeah, they were a support system without necessarily knowing mm. that they, how much they were encouraging to me or how they just didn't, you know. So even when I met these other struggles, I just remembered, ah, this person believes in me. This person told me this and mm. reminded me of this. And mm -hmm. so I was encouraged. Wow. But in, so, so anyways, that experience was... I, I, I absolutely would not trade it for the world. It stretched me in ways I needed. Mm. And in, all the more, in, the, in, in really strong ways, it stretched me. They were the most silent years of my life because I was... What do you mean by silent? You outwardly, are... outwardly. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much speaking I was doing to people. I was embracing a new place. Why I was, you writing? I was, no. That, that is a time my writing took a break, but it did not take a, it, it, I just failed to find the words, the ability to articulate what I was feeling. Yes. Everything was overwhelming. Everything was a bit, every day was some, there were amazing parts of some days, but they were deeply confusing and complex parts of other days. And the whole experience put together was confusing. I suddenly now needed to navigate a life where I'm seeing, you know, and I still had different, amazing privileges. I was one of the only students in that, in that space who wasn't necessarily paying for themselves um, yeah. for their school and, you know, working three jobs and, you know. But at the same time, there, there were structures that had been put in place for my American counterparts mm -hmm. that enabled them to be able to, to navigate those things and be able to do that at 19. Yes. I didn't have that. Yeah. So for me, I came in truly as a real sacrifice project of my family oh, mm. and of and 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 that even makes me emotional because that mm. reminds me of the power of people believing in you especially those from whom you come mm. so i had to make new friends and in making new friends i stumbled upon my one friend uh, mick i give i have to give a shout out she's actually um I'm now based here in rwanda as well again mm. but she encouraged me and of course she's one of many i have many a number i could name but i remember her saying to me specifically you really write beautiful Instagram captions. Mm -hmm. You need to channel that into some public performance of sorts of poetry. Yes. Uh, because at this point, I'd started writing poetry and posting it on my blog or posting it on something so people could read some poems. Yes. They just hadn't had me say it in, in my voice. Mm -hmm. And I was so timid to stand in front of audiences at that point, really timid, even though it was... It's hard to believe it, Exactly. Now, it was, it was hard to believe even then. Yeah. People thought I was very confident, and I was in some respects. But that inner... You see, to stand and to speak poetry is a... Is a even if it's not about you specifically, I could... I, completely made some stories up in terms of fiction yes. or, or in terms of just in imagining scenarios and channeling that in a poem. But at the same time, it is a piece of yourself you're, you're sharing, sharing with the, the world. world because every piece of writing comes, at least for me, my process is that I have to go that to that place, yeah. find an honest way of channeling some emotion mm -hmm. or whatever. And even if it's not about me, at least I'm, I hope I'm doing justice to whoever can Someone relate, is, yes. whoever that story mm. belongs mm, to mm, mm. or will belong to. Yes. And so she said, you know what? 
write and try and you know maybe you should start performing maybe she would encourage me and nudge me and I said me I said okay and, and how far but back she would, was this it was so this was 2013 okay Yeah so I would got there 2012 but by 2013 now early so as the at the end of the school the first school year or towards the end I was now beginning to make new friends and what and of course now these conversations came up and we were chatting and I would take it in I would say me no 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 that can't be me but I would take it in and I would now be I would be emboldened by those tiny words of encouragement and I remember one of the things when I set up my blog actually I set up my blog in 2013 I'm no longer very as constant as as updating it but I have kept it alive so that every once in a while I keep updating and yes. putting some some words on there mm-hmm. but I remember uh, starting it uh, by uh, using a quote like saying every uh, I think there was a quote from I can't remember the author a western author somewhere Um I used to remember the name forgot but it said um never underestimate the power of your encouragement wow to a writer mm-hmm. to a and now I would say to any creative mm-hmm. of sorts and 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 really, in, and to I have anybody. to anyone yeah to anyone and uh, again I was making that point to say we are all creatives in some yes. form I don't yes. we don't have this monopoly Absolutely. over creative that's the beautiful thing yeah we are all we all have a creative streak within us mm-hmm. we all have a, a, some sort of you know a, you know some maybe some may be more gifted at channeling stories better mm-hmm. than others yeah. as others are gifted in other skills but we all have that creative streak and that's the power and the beauty of 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 art and of word mm. and so when she challenged me to that i said okay over time i said you know, i found i found the courage i think we had an international students gathering at some point and there was i think the 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 performances were done they were they, they had done there was some group that had perf- uh, prepared that uh, i think three songs or something they performed them then they were done they were like do we have anyone Anybody. who can share anything talents i think you know mm. the school administration was trying to get you know international students to share more mm. to do more i think they were challenging themselves as well and um i said mm, they asked and they asked and i said maybe i can write something mm-hmm. and in those minutes as they were asking as people some few people from different countries were mm-hmm. were putting up their hands and trying to share something i was writing and what what emotion I wrote, were you experiencing i just know that i was anxiety. anxious i was deeply anxious mm-hmm. i said I don't know what the hell I'm doing but um let me <laughs> oh, let me channel it. some words mm. and I can't remember but I wrote a short piece in my phone yes and then very shyly I put up my hand halfway and the lady happened to see me mm. and I said I have just shot myself in the food now I'm going to make us a, a fool of myself yes. and I was just like what have you done that <laughs> what have you done mm. and then I saw myself standing up I was shaking but i read that short poem in my phone and they all said did you just write that now wow and you have to understand that the how the dynamic in the room was people from different countries mm. and the authority figures mm. were american and yes. they were in that space and for them to to react that way to my writing mm-hmm. boosted my confidence in a way i didn't know i needed because yeah. these were people who i felt inferior to even when i tried to work against that i mm-hmm. constantly felt inferior to mm-hmm. but when they react they said you wrote that in 10 minutes then this other students group from the university we had there was our university down the road and there was another one up the road mm-hmm. they came up to me and they said do you usually do this poetry they can you come like we would like to invite you to our poetry our art i think they had like a storytelling group mm-hmm. or club i can't remember but they said would want to invite you i said ah kumbe it's like this yes. why don't I, like what <laughs> i couldn't believe it really wow. truly so they that, felt like the fear had at that point the that. fear just vanished yes. It yes. really just but, but also looking at your your story your background where you've come from all these moments in high school learning to yeah. write did that kind of feel like it had all come full circle and everything had led up to I, that I think so I think now that I think about it that is a fact it's just yeah. a fact it's just a truth mm. but did I feel it necessarily that moment no I just thought I can't believe this short poem yes, just moved every moved like the this. room mm. and i said there is power yes. and those are the things that constantly make me respect mm. the power of word mm-hmm. just to circle back to where we started mm. the power of words to do something that even you don't necessarily have control over yeah. in the spirits and the minds and the hearts of people True. so it started there 
pu public performance. And after and that, still going. I remember saying, you know what, Mick? Yes. I remember calling her, I said, you know, I'm going to write a poem for Kuibuka. Yes. And then I, she said, yeah, I have a friend. And uh, I, think, I think she had a friend in the, the US, uh, Rwandan Embassy in, the, in DC. Mm -hmm. And she was I able to I connect us. One, and yes. I was able to send a written poem yes. called Tribute to My Beloved. Yes. Or Tribute, depending on yeah. which English you use. But Tribute to My Beloved. And it was an ode to home, the longing I had, mm. that reflection on that dark part of our history. And again, an honest piece. I remember writing it yeah. so vulnerably, but also just reflecting on home as seen for the first time from such a distance mm -hmm. and the affection I had and I was able to channel that. And also just every time that year of that time of the year rolls around, you reflect on the of stories course. and the pain and those things that are fundamental to our story mm -hmm. or that are key parts of our story. And, and I was able to share that and they loved it. And it was absolutely brilliantly delivered by um, Ui, a lady called Ui, mm. um, who I had not met. I don't. I have not met actually her in person yet. But mm. she read it at the UN building in DC. Yes. Was it? There was some I, that that year. I think Kibuka was at the UN building. She read it out, um, and I said, "What? We wrote that? Like not you and not, like we wrote that? <laughs> wow." Mm. And I thought, wow, that was such a beautiful poem. Do you but have she, but I have to give her the credit. Mm. Her delivery made me be, made my words sound like one of the greats, like someone like I had been reading in a book and what. And I was like, I, I actually wrote that. You're able you to know, step so back was, and Yeah, no, it was words. outside of myself being mm. delivered. But so her delivery made me fall in love with my work, and that was the power of her skill in mm. that moment yeah. that really encouraged me and after that I was we were invited to perform in DC again for now the next I think it was maybe the proper Kibuka ceremony that they had later mm -hmm. with the community or was it liberation I can't remember there was a no it was Kibuka because I think we had another there was another event that came up later after the date of and then we were invited to come to DC and that's how I met Malaika yes. and Jidamata and we performed for the first time there, the three of us. Such a beautiful performance. And we had also not met properly. We became friends there. We channeled and we tried to write together. That was a challenge in itself, but a beautiful one. Yes. We became it friends. It's easier and, to write alone. Yeah, than certainly. To because then you have control of your, you know what, but collaboration, again, yes. it comes back to me. It comes back to that thing I was raised with, community, yes, being yes. part of teams, yes. being part of groups, yeah. being part, you know, for me, that, that, that worked mm. in my favor in a yes. way. But of course, it was always a it's always a challenge to extend and write. You have different, your, your different minds. Different Everyone has different delivery. techniques. And yes, yes. we challenged ourselves and we did it. And then that that's beautiful. how we ended up mm. again being called on to perform at Rwanda Day in Atlanta in yes, 2014. Yes, yes, yes. And um, that was brilliant. So the journey has been a constant one. And since 2013 and... Uh, to date, it's 2023. This is 10 years. A lot. I can even it's see ten years the, the of public growth. performance. It is yeah. 10 years. But at different points, when I look at your delivery, when I read the literature, you can see you the evolve growth. and your technique evolve. As it should be, really. As it should it? be. But yeah. I'm curious, do you have a favorite when it comes to your work? <sighs> my, my, you my poetic babies as those are truly my poet, my babies, mm -hmm. are vastly different. And I don't know that I could pick. It's just that there are some which are special, like the, that one, Tribute to My Beloved, was mm -hmm. a beautiful one. Yes. It's a special memory. I have a special memory with it. Mm -hmm. the, but mm -hmm. there's one I did later when I moved back in mm -hmm. the... Uh, end of 2014 I moved back home took a gap year before I now went into transitioned into law school in Kenya yes. but while I was here that year I remember saying I was looking again I was still navigating some you know depressive season and really trying to navigate all the emotions because I had just moved back I was transitioning to another line of life and study and mm. you know I didn't know what that would bring and I was battling inner battling yeah. but I had I was grace uh, I was graced with the the gift of work and I was able to, I love to work, yes. honestly, I love to work and I was able to, I love to do work that I am, I enjoy and I'm enthusiastic about. And I had that, I got that, thank God. Um, but in that time, I remember saying, you know what, I want to record some poem, yes. something, some, you know, and I found a friend of mine, Peter, yes. bless him, who was a, I have a video camera. And then, 
I reached out to him and he was so gracious with his time and one video camera and um, I wrote my words. I said, what I have is my words. Yes. I don't have anything else. Yeah. I don't have money. I don't have anything else. Even mm. the money I think I used to pay for us to rent that camera from, I think, his friend. I can't remember how I got it. I think it was like pocket money that they had given me at work. <laughs> or I just... I, I just made it work and I said, I don't know. So, so I said, okay, oh, if you're recording a poem, you probably need to look a certain way. So mm. I remember going to buy EGTNJ in town. I bought a, a shawl, a lesu. And I said, oh, that looks artsy and like mm. African Africa and what? And I had written a poem called The African Child Will Dance. Yes. Oh. And I and I went to town. That's I remember beautiful. going to town that the night before we recorded. Yeah. And I got into that part of town and I, I remember getting a lesu that looks, you know, that gives off the vibes I wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I got uh, the, is it, uh, what's it called? The, the, is it a recording? No, the, the one that like the, the, the headpiece head that yes, yes. ladies wear on mm -hmm. or something. And I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to use it. Yes. That, that head, the like, thing piece. And I was like, I'm going to use it. And then I got the one for the arm. And I said, I have a black vest and I have black tights. And that is the outfit. Wow. So I used my, I, it's creativity. That mm -hmm. is creativity. That's yes. what it does. You, it you think of the top of your feet. For everybody. True. But it for me, it is for me. It's, it's what I was raised with. We, if we don't have material things or we don't have what we, we, we try to create it. them in, in <laughs> through and it's in everything it's in our environment you can create i mean people made footballs out of paper bags yes. and we played Banana and leaves. we would would make <laughs> all sorts of things and that's creativity mm. and you see that is so african yeah it is so that is why me i believe to fundamentally african are our thing. as as deeply creative yes. as they as we get like yes. we are a deeply creative people mm -hmm. and that for me was that one just one of those things i didn't have anything i had time and i had my words yes and i had a friend who was willing to help me wow and, and he said we'll make it work so i remember where we were going to record was at the top of a building but no it was looked like like he said visually it's too white and the reflection won't work you know what it won't work so i said do i use our office at the time i worked with hey hey labs which was a great you know startup um company at the point it wasn't actually it had you know grown a bit more mm. um but um yeah, so that was that. I tried to say let me, I had access to. I said no. That's the, the office space. Maybe not. May not look that great. It also. It was also a bit white, mm. more white than not. Then I said, you know what? It was a Sunday. Not many cars in Kigali in this part of in in Kiovu part of you know roads. Let's go to the road. Wow. And record. Thirty minutes won't hurt, or an hour won't hurt. Like maybe a car won't pass. Mm. Literally, it was faith. Don't ask me how. Uh, only, only yeah, would you get that like chance to wow. just go. I can't imagine myself doing that in London where I live now to say, let's go and shoot in the middle of the road. <laughs> but we could do that yeah, here. And it yeah. was like a quiet part of the, behind that building. Yeah. Little did we know, only later when the video came out, did I realize that the background that we were standing behind, mm. that we were standing in front of, was, was a fence of bamboo reeds. And that oh. just, everyone said, did you plan that? That was a great setting. That mm. was, that was, what? That background was amazing. I said, you guys, even me, I found this out when I was watching the thing after. <laughs> because, but, all things but look at how that together. aligned. Yes. Look at how yes. that aligned. Yes. Everyone just, you, they said the outfit and the background were mm. great. Mm. And I badly wanted to take credit for that. I, mm. I wanted to say I thought about it and I planned it, but I could not. I, I, have cannot, get, I have to get in a question <laughs> there. How do you stay both yes. uh, spiritually and yeah. creatively yeah. aligned? That's I'd I, even say mentally too. You know, I feel like you are in, you, you have to be, I feel like, to, to get to create at the level that you do. I don't know really, but I, okay, I, I can, I, let me attempt to, to, to make sense of that. I, Again, it starts for me with saying, uh, am I being honest to myself? That mm. Those two years I had in the U.S. at the yes. time yes. really had taught me the power of deep introspection. An introspection that makes you question everything, including my religious faith that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. So I had to break all that down and lose it and lose my sense of understanding of every all the all the ideas of things i had i thought i knew things 
but that, that came tumbling down mm. and I had not and I just had a tiny community of people that I could really speak to mm -hmm. everything had f gone away and there was a lot of silence but there was a lot of going on in my mind I was the thoughts were loud I had to control them but at least there was a deep thing that was building within me in that season of deep introspection that ability to really sit with myself dig and in. dig in and check and become a friend to myself and i became i believe that's where god met me in god's own way that's what keeps me honest as a person to myself first mm. and then that's what makes me bloom into the artist when i go into that space wow. of art you're able to, to bloom. But my yeah. question is, how do you balance it all? Um, you're a lawyer by day, right? Let me put it that way. And mm -hmm. then you are all the way over here in the creative space during your you time. Do you ever feel pulled more towards one than the other? You know, they are not mutually exclusive. Again, I okay. think my life experience has taught me that our experiences are all interconnected at all times. Beautiful. And you cannot convince me otherwise because my life experience is an indication, complete indication mm. and confirmation. I'm, someone might have a different experience, of course. But my life has shown me that everything somehow in our life experiences the dots connect mm. the dots connect mm. those things that i thought i didn't take i took may have taken for granted as a child you see them play out you see the the connection you see you see even when i say i wanted to be a doctor at one point in life guess what my my uh, thesis in law school as i was going to graduate was about it was about addressing a medical problem wow. from a legal point of view that you i never would have imagined that i would do that as my final thesis in yeah, law school yeah. after years of being away from let's say the world of the sciences in terms of practical yeah. engagement with it and every day mm. but the one topic actually you'll be surprised to know my first choice of topic was to write on something creative <laughs> something around intellectual property and whatnot yes. but when i was trying to i started that process of research it just wasn't working and it is only when I began that process and made a choice to write about the medical field, something about access to medicines for non-communicable diseases, but yes. from an intellectual property standpoint. Yes. It's then that I knew I was still passionate and still interested and still loving of that world of, of the sciences of the human body and health and wellness and those things and those things continue to be things I, i'm interested really in so those things the, the dots yes. always connect and that yeah. came because i chose that topic in the end because i have i um uh an aunt of mine came for treatment in nairobi which is where i did my law school and mm -hmm. i hosted her for a week and she was getting cancer treatment and i had to help her get medicines and i experienced the the real mm -hmm. frustration and the real challenge and the real injustice, in my opinion, yeah. of how costly treatment for non-communicable diseases such as cancer is, how uh, that experience and how, how that breaks people more than it heals them. Yeah. She passed on, ended up I'm passing so on sorry. last year. Was it last year or the year before? The year before. But I had that personal experience with her. And I knew that there was nothing that was going to make me feel comfortable than just honoring. In a way, I was honoring her in returning to that topic because of my care yeah. and that rev reverence for the human body and wellness mm. and health, good health and that. You know, and, and you see, it, it, again, when you, I, you would one might think it was random but it was not random yeah. there was a seed that had been planted back in the day yeah. when i was enjoying my science classes mm -hmm. when i was you know mm -hmm. before i ventured into this other yes. field so back to the thing i was saying is the worlds that i work in and you know right now i mm -hmm. do creative work sometimes well 
I'm actually full time. I'm an artist. I'm just always an artist. I'm always creating. I always think creatively. Yes. I view the world through stories. Yes. I relish stories. I love people because people for me are moving stories. <laughs> it all comes down to stories and how we build experiences and how we build community and how we do that mm. through stories. And conversation is the most one of the most beautiful channels for me mm. to channel stories orally and also ability to write written word yeah. and to channel that. It's a complex it's it's as, it's not as easy as it looks no, it writing. Is not. It you would be surprised to know that um I felt physical sensations of being like so anxious and I, I was so short of breath physical breath i could like i felt real because i was trying to write and there was nothing coming out and i felt suffocated in the physical experience of that wow. that words have that power and you would not necessarily imagine that but that was my experience yeah, yeah. so i found this uh, piece of maybe part story part poem part reflection in my notes um that I, as i do every once in a while and it is called word transcends i think it is only right that i share it and hope that it lands on uh receiving hearts um i fell in love with words early in life and in many ways words fell in love with me quickly i realized how beautiful a channel it was through which i could express and examine my hopes my dreams fears and fantasies a path to self discovery a chance to explore the world in form of story a space to hone my voice i have since learned a few things written spoken and unspoken word they wield such great power as to move proverbial mountains word dances on the tongue and soothes or hardens the soul words bring dreams to life or breaks them word elevates word helps us forge paths to each other they restore joy or destroy it words store memories they shape histories word ignites the spirit with freedom song it resists it rejects it affirms it offers us room to grieve word is a place of rest for a moment like a desert photograph it stills or stretches time in my world word heals a mirror on the wall it reminds me that i am a poetic love letter one with earth and water a promise of what is to come a blooming garden and even as seasons pass word remains ultimately in every waking moment word is choice to love without ceasing or to let go